Must have been the extra drag weed. That's how the episode ends? Video sponsored by Manscaped. Go to the links below for more info. Good lord, what is this smut you're listening to? It's not smut, it's Radio Disney. Nudity. In 1959, a Danish woodcutter named Thomas Dam wanted to give his daughter a birthday present. He was a poor man, so he decided to carve her a wooden troll doll out of love. Soon after, the village he lived in and the entire world wanted a troll doll of their own and was willing to pay for it. That's when Thomas Dam created the toy company Dam Things to mass produce one of the most recognizable toys ever. But there was a problem. When his creation made it to America, he filed the copyright paperwork after he started selling on US soil. This caused the troll to fall into the public domain, leading to many, many knockoffs. Unfortunately, he could only get a small percentage of that multi billion dollar industry all those officials and knockoffs sold. That's really tragic, and if I were Thomas Dam, I would simply say. Damn! Among those ripoffs were cartoons and specials created that have no affiliation with damn things except for two. We'll be looking at the pre DreamWorks era of media, many of which are either cursed or controversial. This is every Trolls cartoon and special made before the DreamWorks buyout. It's Juice and Jam time. What the fuck is this shit? Glad I asked. It's the Treehouse Trolls from 1992. They're a series of VHS tapes in the vein of Barney the Dinosaur. It's something parents shoved their kids in front of and played on loop because they didn't have Netflix back then. Personally, I consider these tapes a pseudo-psychological horror about two kids being haunted by a troll. Go away. There's no need to fear, this troll just wants to take these kids to troll land. To do so, he does the magical ritual of tickling the bare feet of these children. Make my friends the size of trolls. This is silly. I'm telling you, this usually works. Mmm, yeah, now that we're a little more informed today, I kind of question every time there's an emphasis on people's feet now, especially involving kids. Like, there's a lot of media on the top of my head, ones that don't even involve you-know-who, that has these scenes with kids' feet. It's very concerning. But anyway, this ritual shrinks them down and makes it so they can't go to heaven or hell anymore. Zooming through space and absorbing cosmic radiation, onto the magic school bus they go. Seatbelts, everyone! There are no seatbelts on buses, you backwards-ass school system! Upon reaching their destination, you're treated to a miserable 40 minutes of them hanging around and singing preschool songs. It is just unbearable. I expected more entertainment from something made for toddlers. The horn on the bus goes honk, 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 honk. honk. Oh, by the way, you know actress and comedian Rachel Harris? She was in The Hangover, Lucifer, Suits, was the mom in the first three Diary of Wimpy Kid movies. Apparently, this was her first acting role ever where she played Big Mama the Troll. I'm the treehouse mom, and you know just where I'm from. I'm so happy in my tree with my little family. And when we get to the chorus, we want you to sing it for us. I'm the treehouse mom. I can't believe they whitewashed Martin Lawrence. This was back when she had zero professional experience trying to get stage work upon moving to New York. She had this to say on an interview with the Onions AV Club. Treehouse Trolls? That just came out of an audition in this shitty theater. Like, it wasn't even a theater, it was a room near Times Square. And I was like, I hope this is a legitimate audition. I could be going in for porn, good God. I could have died so many times. I don't remember a single line my character spoke. I think I've tried to block that out. I just remember thinking, oh my God, I hope it gets better than this. Just watched a YouTube video of Treehouse Trolls, scared the shit balls out of me. If it's me under that suit, I blocked it out. That's a good mindset to keep with this creation. So is there anything else that goes on with this tape? Well, just before they reenact the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, the kids befriend Alan Moore by tickling his feet. Yeah, let's just go home. This is not a safe place for kids. Back to the radioactive short bus we go.
Oh, and there's a second VHS tape of the Treehouse Trolls where they meet this B-Stars OC. Good show, you should watch it. I happen to be a very talented fellow. You are? I certainly are. <laughs> Donald the Dancing Donkey, at your service. You know... Maybe there are people that even Haru wouldn't sleep with. No offense to Haru, I'm insulting the donkey guy. We don't slut shame here, we slut appreciate. I had enough of this. On to the next piece of Trolls media. You know, I'm not even sponsored by this game, I just really love it. Hypercharge Unbox on Switch. Go play it. The new patch is out. It fixes a lot of the glitches I had problems with. Coming up next, the Flintstones meet the Jetsons. Uh-oh, I smell another cheap cartoon crossover. Well, I've always said the best crossovers are the ones no one asked for. Many obvious ones have way too many expectations, while stuff like the Simpsons meet the X-Files or Billy and Mandy meet the kids next door have little prior expectations to disappoint. Now, here's another crossover absolutely no one, and I mean no one, wanted. The Magic Trolls and the Troll Warriors from 1991. <coughs> That's right, a merging of two toy lines. The Magic Trolls were marketed towards girls and the Troll Warriors to boys. Sounds like a great way to capture multiple demographics. So were these also two separate pre-established cartoon shows coming together? Not even. It's the very first episode of a 30-minute pilot that desperately tries to introduce way too many characters. Well, here they come. I might have known we'd wake up in a prison cell. What have you done to get us arrested? Well, I, I don't quite recall, but I've never done anything bad in all my years as a magic troll. Maybe this could have worked if they didn't shove in about 10 magic troll characters and seriously, one troll warrior to be in the main cast. What a serious imbalance. As a pilot, it's a terrible first impression and thus it never got a series. So what's the actual story? Like most beloved children's media, it's about slavery. The kingdom is enslaved as their princess is captured, so she hatches some magic trolls to save the world along with a single warrior toy. And remember, anyone who dares to smile or be happy will meet the same fate Sven is about to make. The villains are evil trolls who don't want anyone to express happiness or laughter, which this theme of human emotions also comes up in the CG DreamWorks movie. I wonder if they got any ideas from the pilot. I checked if the toys themselves had any lore related to that, and no, I can't find anything. The closest bit of lore involves the story that trolls cause laughter, which is good luck. By the way, I see in the credits this pilot was directed by a man named Xavier Picard. Interesting. I also noticed the Magic Trolls is co-produced by Avi Arad. What else did he produce? A couple of other cartoons, the 90s X-Men, Spider-Man, even a few movies like X-Men, Iron Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Verse, Blade, and Bratz. The, the, the movie. Keep in mind, he didn't write or direct these movies, he just put money into them and sometimes forced controversial choices like adding Venom into Spider-Man 3 among other disasters. But anyway, Magic Trolls and the Troll Warriors is the very first thing this man ever produced. The MCU, hell, superhero media after the 90s may have never been the same had it not been for this crap. Possibly. I'm not a scientist. And Zink was right. Celia would see Sven again, for there were many gloomy trolls to be made in slivers, laughter to be spread, and many trips to be made to the magic village. Hey, kids love superheroes, so how about the 1992 Super Trolls? Another failed pilot where they live underground until these evil trolls become the first to reach the surface and terrorize our world. Thankfully, they're not much of a threat. But someone's gotta stop them, so this underground society search for the bravest trolls in their village that are worthy. These are three of Troll Land's most courageous trolls. It's not them. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's not gonna go over well with people who wear Punisher t-shirts. So who are the real bravest warriors? Bendar, Hercules, and Warpy put a whoopee cushion on the king's throne. 
It wasn't our fault. Okay, if you fought in Iraq or been inside a burning building, you ain't shit. These three kids punked the king of their own monarchy. They got nothing to fear. So now this wizard grants these kids each a different power. Psychic energy, super strength, or transformations. Holy trollsome! <laughs> I did not need to see that, yet I kept my eyes open. So now the super trolls head to the surface to save the day, only to piss everyone off. I'm picking up bad troll vibrations in that direction! Good god! Obviously this doesn't go so well, and they for some reason steal a trolley. A trolley full of trolls. That's Grand Theft Trolley! I've gotta stop them! Grand Theft Trolley got announced? When are we getting another bully game, Rockstar? I'll give the Super Trolls one thing, this pilot wasn't boring. It was a lot more chaotic than the previous entries. I almost wish it had more episodes, all because of how dysfunctional they are. This is straight up the quack pack had they remained superheroes and if one of them talked in whatever accent this is. But how will we get around the city? It's so big and we're so small. <coughs> oh, yo, dogs! We got other troll cartoons coming up. Oh. <laughs> Hey, all you cool and groovy trolleys out there, it's time for the Trolleys Radio Show with a hit. Just keep on trolling. I'm Rockin' Trolls. Stay with us for the best right here on WTROLL. Much like the DreamWorks movie, the Trolleys from 1982 is a jukebox musical full of pre-existing songs. It's a puppet show about this Howard Stern-looking troll hosting a radio show to sing songs and shock jock. Yeah! Yeah, <laughs> cool. Rockin' Troll, are you in the mood for some good gossip? Hey, I never saw that troll before in my life. <laughs> Excuse me? What? <laughs> no clue what that meant, but as punishment, he gets tied to a cactus. I hope he's ready to experience Custer's revenge. <laughs> The entire special is switching between songs, weather forecasts, news updates, and characters ripping off the Smurfs language. Half the dialogue is replacing every other phrase with the word troll. Hello and kisses from Trollywood USA. It's been a star-studded week here as the Academy of Trollish Pictures announced the nominations for its most coveted award, the Troller. Among those honored were, for Best Actor, Nick McTrollty for his role in Prince of Trolls, Marlon Brandro for his remake of The Troll Father Part, one and Sylvester Trelone for Trolley 9. It's so overdone. Like, you have this chick who has the audacity to tell this joke. Well, I didn't have enough money for the Troll Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> How is that even a pun in this universe? Every other word is already replaced with troll. If anything, it's just a poor choice of words. The world building here is completely flawed. I ask you, can you survive 40 minutes of these kinds of songs? The tickled old records God, I hope he has his pants on. All aboard the SS Troller just learned a new racial slur and ready to spread the word. The Trollies only made three VHS specials, but I found out there were plans for a 13 episode TV series that never happened. My source being a promo tape meant to encourage retailers to take Trollies merch hosted by this Cabbage Patch bitch. I love being so popular and I love making nice people rich. Trollies means great sales and maximum profit. Don't just sit there. Sell some trolley products. You'll love the jingle. In your pocket. <laughs> well, it looks like that franchise never took off and the trolleys faded with the 90s, never to be heard from since. Until 2016. <laughs> yes. 2016, the same year as the DreamWorks movie, the Trollies came back. Well, not really. They just now have this very modern Squarespace looking website. On here, I found out these frackers won two Emmys, aired on TV, and went on tour. Where did they tour? I'm not sure. Maybe in elementary schools or the mall? Also, get this their music is on Spotify, and you can now buy an ebook of the Trollies. What the hell is going on here? Apparently, they're making a comeback. Yeah, I called up the original producer, Donald Kaysen, who runs this website and has his number listed. To my questions, he had this to say. We're sorry, you have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. Damn it! 
Well, I just don't want any of you to bother this guy. I'm doing this for research purposes. I then emailed him and Donald emerged from his ancient tomb full of decomposing trolleys costumes to answer me. From his mighty pyramid, he has proclaimed that he'll, and I quote, revisit the idea of doing more trolleys in the summer of 2020. So they're out there, the trolleys. They're coming back. They're coming. And we'll also be back after these messages with more Cursed Trolls Media. Okay, trolls as superheroes, take two. Just when you thought the street sharks had too much class, the stone protectors are here to be the Ninja Turtle knockoffs even less people watched. They're a group of musicians who constantly sing and are powered by the gems on their bodies. <laughs> yeah, I think Rebecca Sugar went too far on this one. I'm glad most of the episodes are uploaded online. It's all thanks to the YouTube channel titled Stone Protectors Fan, which is a goddamn lie because no one is a Stone Protectors fan. That is clearly an undercover cop. One thing I do like about them is they at least have guns and lasers ready to blast anyone on sight. Oh, I got blind one. Yeah, I'll stop for a little bit of English. On second thought, this show is kind of metal. By the way, if you're wondering, no, this guy is not that other guy from Toy Story. They look similar, but not quite. That would imply the Stone Protectors had any cultural relevance. Outside a decent beat-em-up game and a robot chicken skit, nobody knows about the Stone Protectors, and that's for the best. Ah, so nice of you to drop in. Whoa! Before we continue with more Trolls Media, in this trying times, I just want to say... Manscaped! Back at it again, it's... Yep, Manscaped! You want to shave your... Lawn Mower 3.0! It's not for your face, it's for anywhere below your neck. It's TSA friendly, you'd wish the TSA would cuff your clean-shaven balls for carrying this around. Get 20% off plus free shipping and two free gifts with the code TAXI20 at manscaped.com. And look at this, it's got a light in case you're spelunking on the moon and want to shave. It's perfect for where the sun don't shine. I'm too afraid to look at my own reflection in the mirror, so this is perfect for me. And don't worry about cuts, it's skin-safe technology, no nicks, no snags guaranteed. Plus the 3.0 is backwards compatible, meaning you can use the 2.0's replaceable ceramic trimmer blade, and vice versa. PS4 ain't backwards compatible, but this is. Once again, get 20% off plus free shipping and two free gifts with the code TAXI20 at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you, and so will I. Manscaped also works for female sexes too. In 2003, after 44 years, damn things finally regained the exclusive rights to the trolls. No more public domain bootlegs. And in 2005, for the first time, we have an official cartoon blessed by them. With the help of the animation studio... D. This is Trolls with a Z. The hip new redesign certainly caught people off guard, but this old article should clear things up. Despite the exposed midriffs and boy craziness, sexual suggestiveness is not intended to be part of the appeal or marketing plan. Deke president and CEO Andy Hayward views the relationship between the trolls as a combination of Winnie the Pooh, friends, and sex in the city. Um, okay, I would have compared it to Bratz or 16, but sure. From first impressions, it kind of seems like another girly teen show where they hang out at the mall and lust after boys. Hottie! Dylan! <laughs> Lost soul. That is harassment. As the series goes on, it starts to unravel a bit of lore to it. The characters practice magic and sometimes will have to fight evil, sort of like Winx or Witch. Only saw a few eps for this video, but I have a love for urban fantasy and city locations. Interesting premise, although it's held back by the kind of stereotypical characters who are borderline abusive. And it's okay I changed over the summer? 
You mean because you grew up and stopped letting us push you around? Yeah, I guess. I was bored with the old Amethyst anyway. Also, yeah, you already know who my favorite character is. Pikachu. Not Pikachu, Pikachu. And there's other magical hijinks going on, like when one of the trolls gets a wacky sickness that causes their feet to glow. What is with this franchise and feet? Oh my god. They're taking advantage of you. Amethyst got you to take your shoe off on purpose. She wanted you to be humiliated. Okay, that's it, buddy. I'm calling the cops on this show. I actually really like their designs. The sharp edges, the outfits. Although as trolls, they're so bulky and cluttered that it must have been a pain to animate. Plus, some of these background colors are a little garish. Still, compared to the minimalist era this came out from, the characters and backgrounds are very detailed. And check out these establishing shots. Shots. It's a nice little drawing and whoa! That 3D was not necessary, but they did it anyways. That 2005 CG still looks really good, which must have been pretty expensive and again, very unneeded. This is where I realized Trolls was an expensive show that did so poorly in viewership it resulted in a lawsuit. I'm not kidding. Animation studio Deke Entertainment filed a suit against the Trolls Company. Deke's case was that the cartoon was doing its best to reignite the toy sales. Yet, remember all those bootlegs we discussed earlier in the video? Deke felt those cut into their profits, so they sued the Trolls Company for not stomping out these knockoffs. In response, the Trolls Company filed a countersuit stating the Deke cartoon was so poorly marketed and had so few viewers that it destroyed the toy's reputation. They also sued Deke for pretending their cartoon company was financially stable enough to market the toys when Deke was actually bleeding millions of dollars each year. Ah! Damn. Deke also promised the show would air on TV, which was just dumped on DVD in some territories. They also failed to create a wireless device toy and a cutting edge interactive website by the time the episodes aired. Well, let's check out that website that's thankfully archived. Welcome to the Trolls World! Oh damn, Neopets is sweating right now. In the end, Deke lost the case, admitted they messed up big time, and recommended the toy company pull trolls from stores until retailers forget how badly they sold. Wow. All that over this show. It smells like my little brother's feet. Ugh. I will not tolerate this. No, none of the writers worked on Totally Spies, believe me, I checked. Although, if you want something even more disturbing, at the end of every episode, they have a spell moment. It's a segment where they have someone's little brother, I don't know whose brother, behind this glass case in what I can only describe as a Nazi experimentation facility. Every spell moment has the girls practicing magic only for the brother to meet a terrible fate like drowning in his own tears, literally. Or having this happen. Uh. Hey, Onyx, C can you scratch my nose? Are those rocks just gonna turn back into meat chunks? Is the last bits of blood in his head keeping him alive? <laughs> Why is this franchise like this? Everybody knows. Did you know? I thought I did. Man, that little crab is speaking from the soul. Well guys, this is where our video ends as I ran out of Trolls media that I'm aware of. Beyond this, in 2013, Damn Things sold off the Trolls to DreamWorks Animation who revitalized the series. Maybe some other time I'll cover those movies, sequels, and shows that spun off from it. Or maybe I won't. Bye. Every little girl loves little trolls, but what do guys wish for? Battle trolls are out of control! Battle trolls! Big dudes with bad attitudes! Born to battle! <laughs> Even other battle trolls! Troll call! Trollminator! Controllula! Nunchuck troll! Bullseye troll in the troll net launcher! Sven troll in his trollosaurus! Battle trolls! <laughs> And troll sets each sold separately. Catch the premiere of King Crab, Space Crustacean, and Courage the Cowardly Dog next on Cartoon Network.